everybody. Thank you, thank you. So, so we do welcome you uh, here today, and in fact, we do have a bonus uh, board member here in Tommy's. Tommy, where did you he's right there. Oh, he's right there. Yeah. So, uh, welcome to you, and a special welcome to Diana Potterwolves. This is her first. Uh, let's talk. Yay. Yes, a brand new uh, board member. Notice nobody brought tomatoes. Yeah, no, <laughs> more locks. No, that's right. She's here for defense. Anyway, and Buddy would like to say a few words in honor of this being Memorial Day weekend. Uh, first of all, it is Memorial Weekend, and we really celebrate the death of the military or people that put us in the freedom that we have. First of all, Anyone here that has been in the military, would you please stand up? Wow. Okay. And let's all just uh, close our eyes and have a minute of silent prayer for those that gave us the freedom that we have. Great way to start. So we do have uh, the roster of people who've signed up for this session. So uh, as is our custom, we'll just go right down the list. What we don't have and what uh, you have been asked to provide in the past is the topic of your question. We don't have that. So, uh, so this is going to be completely free and open. Uh, and so we'll start with the first one who signed up, uh, Patricia Katnikarki, please. Did you want to address the did Pardon you me? want to address, yeah, did you want to address the panelists? No. <laughs> well, you don't have a question, you don't have a question. She has no questions. No, I, right now, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Something might pop up, right? But that's right, okay. Wait a few minutes. Yeah, see, that's kind of the bonus of knowing what the topic was, then we wouldn't be calling on people that didn't intend to address us, but we'll just go through the list and see where it goes. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Mar Marjorie Morgan? Is she here today? No? Lloyd Thrash? Marjorie Morgan, either of you, okay. Lloyd Thrash, all righty. Jim Culler, Sharon Bowen, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon, would you like to address uh, the panelists? I know you just walked in. What we're doing is we're just going down the list of who yes, signed no, up. Yes, I'll ask a question. Okay, I great. I think people think you're taking a roll call. They don't yeah. understand. Okay. Uh, well, one of the things that I want to say first off is thank you all so much for continuing to let's talk. Because I think that was one thing that we were missing before. And what as uh, members of the board have y'all learned from the let's talk and have been able to take back and impact with your decision or your thought process? Oh, I like that question too. Man, that would be a nice one to have had an advanced topic on. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you're welcome to think about that and, and uh, at the end of the session to comment on that. Yeah, Buddy, do you have any thoughts? Well, I personally have learned a lot from listening to the ones that we have had. had. When we've had discussions among some of the board, we have brought up the topics. There have been topics brought up that pertain particularly to uh, uh, Leslie and, and that uh, the staff and that thing, and we've told them about that. We All three of us will probably make notes. And then a lot of times we'll watch the video too to make sure that we heard everything we're supposed to. So I, I think it's fabulous. I wish we could get more people to come that haven't been here before. Why? Because a lot of these are the same people that come to all of them. But uh, I, I think it's really great. I wish we'd have done this years ago. Right, so one thing that you've gotten from it is that you just hear whatever we have to say and you yes, take that back and just discuss that among yourselves. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so specifically your specific examples or your staff 
Well, and we try, if, I mean, if it's, if it's a particular question or something you brought up and we don't answer it, we try to make sure you get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, <clears throat> what I would add to this, and I think uh, the board would attest uh, to this, is I don't think there is a suitable substitute to face-to-face -face conversation. I don't. Uh, emails are limited. Even phone conversations are limited. Certainly, three minutes with the press sitting to the side and 90 property owners behind you and you're on right. camera is a limited way to exchange. So to me, these sessions have validated what I've believed for a long time, which is open, candid exchange between people of common heart, in this case for our association, um, is, is the best format. It truly is. I am at a loss to call out something specific, although I think it was you that brought it up in this room, you're sitting over here, <laughs> you brought it up about the importance of education. Uh, property owner education. Was that you? I don't chance? think that was me. Oh, it wasn't? Okay. I remember in this room um, that sometimes in the exchanges that we had, we, we had property owners go, oh, I didn't realize that was the case, you know? And sometimes should property owners have more information, um, some of the concern and angst uh, might be abated. Um, beyond that, I'll think about it the rest of the meeting. Okay. But to me, it just affirms it affirms face to face is, is the best. I I prefer that. I've done it share a bullet test. I've done that. Yeah. So um, uh, particularly with those with whom I don't always share an opinion. I like going into those conversations and because uh, you do do. And I think that the fact that y'all allow dialogue and not just you you ask a question and then no one else can even jump on that because the last time I came that really opened up by the end of that uh, meeting everybody we were just having a discussion and it wasn't just a one-way or two-way dialogue and right. everybody was involved and everybody shared opinions. So. Great. So I think it's the right step. Good. Thank you. All right next up is um, Fred Jonas. It's Fred here. Who are you people? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should just raise our hands and talk. No, I want to, those who went to the trouble of signing up, we'll, we'll uh, cover them first. Cheryl, you're next. Cheryl Dowden. Cheryl Dowden. Um, first, I would like to say that the board meeting on May 23rd was productive. There was much exchange of information and ideas by the board members. Hopefully, as promised, the property owners will be allowed to speak at future meetings. Respect is very important. We notice the CEO is still interjecting into the meeting when she is not being asked a question. We ask that the board discontinue allowing this to occur. We also notice that the presence of the normal group of POA employees were missing since non-employee property owners received sanction letters we are wondering if the employees and employee spouse who purposely strode over to our side of the room also received sanctions. Is that why they were not at the special board meeting? I, ne I said that the meeting was productive, but parts of the meeting were concerning. We are always supportive of prayer, except when the prayer is used as a manipulative and condescending tool. This prayer was used to shame folks that have different opinions. This is unacceptable and very offensive. We also found the reference to protective covenants for dummies to be offensive. This is not the first time we have heard folks speak of property owners in a disdainful manner. The chairperson's monologue at the beginning was also unacceptable. The board cannot control property owners and social media. The board does not have the right to chastise property owners for speaking up about what we consider to be the problems we see being created. This was an attempt to stifle and control us. Very wrong of the board chairperson to do this. We have talked to a number of realtors. They feel they are being pushed. Cheryl, Cheryl yes. I'm going to interrupt you just yes, a moment. This is meant to be a dialogue. Do you have something that is of a dialogue nature, or is this a statement? Um, okay, we've talked to a number of realtors. They feel like they are being pushed out by village homes and land. And um, I contacted Teleco Villages 
through their PLA website. The person that responded back to me was not the PLA. It was an independent realtor. On the Teleco PLA website, they list independent realtors and independent builders. There's, there doesn't seem to be anything like a Builders Guild or Teleco Homes and Land. Another potential problem that I feel is the development of a lodge. Um, has a return on so investment. So, I'm going to I'm going to interrupt again. This mm -hmm. is meant to be a dialogue, and I'm happy okay. to dialogue you with wanna... you on any of this. But okay. I don't want it to just turn into a, a statement here. That that's so long that I no, can't I... remember the topic. Oh, okay. So you're bringing up. Well, okay. <laughs> I, under, I understand. Um, okay. Well, I why don't you just bring up one topic okay. and let's dialogue the first, about that? The topic. first thing that I wanted to ask um, were about the sanctions. Was anybody sanctioned but Melinda Noble and Brian Darst? Uh, they received sanction letters. Let me just say, this board has compiled a list of about 17 different things we're going to be doing in response to what we experience, and that's all I'm going to be willing to say about that. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, the prayer, we objected. We object to that. So noted. Okay. Um, we also object to protective covenants for dummies. Can so no um, No, let's. I, I'm going to give you one last chance to have something that we can dialogue about, and then I'm going to move on to the next person. I'm trying to give you a chance here. Okay. Can we talk about the lodge? Sure. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's do that. What what, can, what's what your is, question what is, about it? What is being done to develop this? And has return on investment been done on this? I mean, I, I have a lot of questions about it, but what's being done to develop the lodge i think it's i think it's fair we all have a lot of questions mm -hmm. and uh i believe is it june i'll look it up right. uh in june is when the ceo is to come to us with i thought that proposal. was august, august. august. maybe it's, it's august. august maybe it's August. so yeah. we don't have any more information to okay. share with you on that okay. so she's doing the developing of it and then mm -hmm. she comes to you and says this is what i have yeah she has to come with a, a <coughs> proposal for us uh, to contemplate is there a developer chosen yet, or has have not no, that I know. No we haven't talked about it. Right. Yeah, okay. we haven't talked about it. So you don't. I was in one of the first meetings back when Tweets was here, and they had a some company come in to do a survey on whether or not a lodge was justified, mm -hmm. and a lot of different people from the community came in and talked about that. And it's my understanding that they didn't really make the case that there was enough demand to support a lodge here as an independent, standalone, profitable entity. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, that was what when we were here. That was 2014. Right. That is not current thinking right now. The current thinking is that the association would benefit from a lodge being so the association in or adjacent to are willing to village. subsidize it like. You know, just another that minute. proposal hasn't been made yet. I don't know what the proposal is going to look like, but August isn't all that far away. I think no, we've got not. hope that we'll um, we'll get we'll so get would something you that we that? can dialogue about at that time, right? So you're not saying nay or nay to supporting it or subsidizing it if it came up. No, no other. Is we won't know until we hear whatever proposal, what the proposal is. is. But I mean, here's what I think is fair to say. Yeah, I mean, are you yeah. generally in favor of oh, the yeah. notion of a lodge? Are you, Diana? No, generally. You're not in favor of a lodge, and I am in favor of a lodge. So well, I'm we'll in see. favor of a lodge if it'll pay for itself. Well, exactly. I mean, exactly. I, mean, I think that's, that. I think that's, that's, that's the, the whole deal. That's the whole I'm deal. not in favor of a lodge that contains any POA money in it. Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. Are you on well, board with that too? No POA money for lodge? There's that the way I have heard anything at this point, there is nothing to involve the POA putting money in. Well, the problem in charge of that presentation. Uh, Leslie. Leslie. Okay. Yeah, Leslie. Yeah, the CEO will present to the board uh, an option to consider, and the board will debate and discuss that, and that is expected by August. And, and I imagine it'll coincide with budget season, so we'll clearly know what, what, if anything, would impact the budget in her proposal, right? If anything. And I'm not saying there will be. I'm saying if anything. Welcome. Joe, can you let these people sit down behind you? He can't, can't hear you. Camera. People behind you that want to sit down. Can you move yes, your chair forward just a tiny bit? 
Thanks. <laughs> okay, the problem that I have with the lodge is that if you can get a developer to bring it in and manage it and run it and everything, that's all fine and well. But what if it fails? We're not going to let a large building sit there like that. We can't. It would be, it would be really bad. It would look very unfavorable. I can completely agree. And then the POA would have to take it over. Well, there would have to be some sort of, we're so far away from, you know, there's so many questions out yeah. there, but there would have to be some sort of exit strategy built into the process, too, for it to become palatable. That yeah, and, good. And, and here's another thing that we need to consider. If a lodge were to come in, either adjacent to the association's property or within it, <coughs> those are going to be very complex deals, right? Mm -hmm. So POA money can take lots of different forms. It can be in a reduced provision of land, the cost of provision right. of land. It can take the form of, you know, some sort of sweet deal on assessments. I don't know. Let's just keep our mind open to the fact that this isn't going to be write a check and it goes, okay. it's going to be a complex deal that we all need to be patient and listen to all aspects of when it's proposed. If, if it's, you know, Will we be privy supposed. to the complex deal? <coughs> will, that be, or not, will that be confidential? To the degree it's not protected, it, I don't think we're going to have a contract by then. She's expecting to present for our consideration a plan, not necessarily a contract at that time. Um, and the contract may have confidential provisions in it because contracts like that sometimes do, right? But we also know that uh, any property owner can examine a contract at the office, but to make it public, when there's confidential provisions, no, that won't happen. But honestly, I don't anticipate a contract in August. I anticipate a plan for the board's reaction to see, is this even worth pursuing? And that will be a very public discussion at that point, or I intend to make it a very public discussion. Good. Yeah, Pat? Uh, I'd like to know, <clears throat> I just lost my thought. I'd like to know, how big, if you know, how big is a lodge? Because to me, a lodge is yes. a very big thing. It we have no clue. Right. It's so are we happen. talking about a big? Don't know we don't know. We don't know. You don't have no know. clue. Mm -hmm. we okay, but don't. We won't in know. your directive to um, Leslie, to the CEO, you didn't give her parameters as to how big or how small. <laughs> That's right, isn't it, Diana? We did. We did give her parameters about how big or how small. What, uh, that's right. what would the CEO be making her recommendation on? On her best assessment of what is beneficial to the association. And, and it could be 10 units. It could be 100 units. I, I don't know what that is. Here's the frank fact. You know as much about this incoming lodge as we do. Right. You do, because nothing has been proposed that we can consider at this point. Has anybody talked to Cooper about land that they have or if there's an interest there? There's been there? many conversations with Cooper about land that they have. <laughs> for the lot. For the lot. For the lot. Not for Let the lot. Let me say this. Okay. We as a board have not had no information on what is going on. I can say to you that Leslie and whoever are looking for a developer to come in and do this. And they're looking for somebody <coughs> that can do it and has a plan and come in. And at that time in August, she'll lay out to us, we talk to these people, we talk to those people, here's what one of them wants to do, here's another one. And then we will have to make a decision at that time. But right now, we don't know anything, okay? Uh, but my commitment to all of you is as soon as we are presented that plan, you will see that plan. There'll be plenty of opportunity for public uh, d discussion about it. Why would uh, or why is John Cooper not being considered as a developer? Yes. Uh, I didn't say that he was. We didn't say he wasn't. Is he? We, we don't, don't, they don't, don't know. know. They don't know what's going on. I mean, well, it's, I, it's so I'm going to take be... exception to a characterization that we don't know what's going on. It is. Um, <laughs> no. You no. said you didn't. I didn't know. What, right. I, what I said is, it, the time has not come for us to be informed about what's going on. 
The time has okay, not well, yet. Well, I disagree come. with that, but we're but at least I understand. It's coming up in August. Yeah. I still disagree. So there. <laughs> The time has come and gone. What is wrong with the uh, motel outside the West Bay? I mean, it's sitting empty all the time. So what's wrong with trying to work something out with that? That's an idea, but they're going to need to spend a lot of money to update it. As I understand it, the study in August will be, it'll include studies of what's practical both in, I would assume, but both inside and outside the village. It will include the costs of possibly refurbishing the Econo Lodge, which is probably a lot more than constructing something from scratch. And we won't know any of that. That's what a study is all about. So let's wait till August and take all this discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I want to read to you what the CEO is accountable for providing to the board verbatim. By August, and in collaboration with the Hot Springs Village Chamber of Commerce, present a path forward report to the board for lodging and East End grocery solutions. That's what we're awaiting, all right? So we know of no plans at this point, but I imagine they're being actively worked on. This lady in the blue bag. Can, can I ask you, as individual board members, how would you prepare to assess the plan given to you by Leslie in August? You will certainly not vote on anything in August, right? You oh, will gosh, simply no. hear her plan. Oh, hear so her plan. how will you prepare to assess the legitimacy of her study? Well, for me, it will depend on what I get presented within the study as to what avenues I take to research. Okay. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to get presented with. Right. And I would go a step further to say these things happen a lot. Uh, uh, it's not uncommon for these kind of uh, things to come up. But because they are of a real estate and economic development nature, they get discussed out of the public eye. We have a policy around that. That has, since I've been on the board 14 months, that has happened multiple times. There are mechanisms to allow the proper level of board member education on elements that are confidential, and should they get to a point where they can be made public, they will be made public. So we have mechanisms so that your board is informed, but not prematurely to the public because of legitimate confidential aspects. Well, Does I want to make sense? sure you're not asked to make a decision before you have time no. to vet it no. and then make another error. No, believe me, that <laughs> no. will not happen. No, that will happen. It, it's been stated to me by a board member that Mr. Cooper could stop this. So if that, that's what a board member told me. I asked and they specifically said Mr. Cooper could stop this. That was one of the reasons they gave me for wanting to buy out Mr. Cooper. So if he indeed can stop it because of his assessments or whatever and because of the fact that he is the only developer, if he indeed can stop it, are we getting, are we going to him first to make sure that we can even do this before we come up with a plan? Well, let me respond to that one minute. Mr. Cooper has currently sold some of his reserve property. We don't know anything about it. He didn't come to us. Was that recently? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And we don't know who, it, I mean, we do know one person or one group, we think, we don't know what they intend to do with it. Mr. Cooper can do anything he wants to do with his reserved property. The only problem with that is, and people don't understand this, if he sells you, let's hypothetically say you want to buy the 56 acres outside the East Gate, okay? He sells that to you, you get his declarant rights for that property, you can become the developer for that property, we have no say-so in that other than the POA has to do the infrastructure for that, right. especially MFT and brings it into the building. Right. So that's, I mean, we don't know. And, he, and, and 
we understand he now has a potential contract on another piece of property. But he doesn't come to us and ask us if he can do that. But that doesn't answer the question, if he can stop us, are we going to him and even making sure that we can do what we're talking about doing before yeah, we spend a lot of time? I would be smart to do, but we don't know anything at this point. Leslie could be doing it then. She could be already going to him. Yes, you don't know. We don't so know. we don't know anything. Don't it's know. all in Leslie's hands at this oh, point. Which is, really well, she, she can't do anything yeah, without yeah, the board yeah. approval. Is there anything else on the lodge? Well, we also, just, I'd just like to add that we don't know that Cooper can stop it because he may think he can, and there are ways around just about well, everything. All we know is a board member that thinks he can. Well, yeah, that thinks he can. Let's look at the specifics well, of why and how. Any, any this rumor stuff member, is just stupid. Any one board member has no authority. <clears throat> the only authority the board has is when we have majority. the majority of the board, board do something. That's right. I could tell you tomorrow the sun's not going to come up. Okay? No, that's right. But I, that doesn't have anything to do with the board. But then we might ask you why you thought that. But that's <laughs> <laughs> you can ask that person right. why they thought that. That would be the appropriate thing to do. Yeah. yeah, Pat, do you have something on the lodge? And then we'll move on to another topic. Can I just make a comment oh, on Bruce? <laughs> oh well, Peyton, it's you too that you know have the shared name here. So yeah, <laughs> he, he had a chosen he had his hand, 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 hand up. So <laughs> he did have his hand up. I don't agree. <laughs> I just wanted to make a, a quick comment on Buddy's statement, and that is, it indicates and it clarifies that we have to maintain an exceedingly good relationship with Cooper because they have a lot of power. And the, the, the thing now. is, hey, they didn't ask us. We should always ask them because we want to err on the side of doing the right thing or the most conservative thing in relation to Cooper because they have a lot of power. That's right. And back to the lodge for a minute. Right. And I was going to include health care only because those are two of the things that are coming up. If I had 22 things that I thought the village should do, and you know there were a lot of lists floating around during the election and stuff, if I had 22 things, I could go down that list and I could mark out 11 at least. Not because they were unimportant, because they're not a priority. And if I were picking lodge and health care, those would be two that I would eliminate. Not because they're not important, but we have an alternative to lodging. Everybody likes to control, you know, manufacture your own cookies, but you might go out and have somebody else do it. Uh, I get that, but it would seem to me the most important thing is to monetize our village, and that means marketing. And these other two things, hey, healthcare, I think we should have been involved with Cranford's when they took the store out. And by involved, I mean had a dialogue with them to see what they were thinking, because that store was important on the East End. Mm -hmm. Same way with NMPC and CHI. I think we should have a dialogue with them, mm -hmm. because we're important to them and they're important to us. But we're not going to build a hospital in no. the village. No. I mean, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, and that was mentioned. Yes. If I was going to build a hospital, I'd build it outside. As to the lodge, probably the same thing. But what I'm saying is right now we have an alternative to housing for somebody that comes here. Why are we putting the cart before the horse? I don't get it. And what alternative are you, do you well, have in mind when you say that? Well, we they, 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 they have, no, 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 I'm listening. They have sorry, things don't set up where people can stay in people's homes. Right. They did a thing with um, Mount Carmel. We have the motel outside. We have lots of alternatives, and we Rentals. can probably produce more mm -hmm. without spending one dollar. Yeah, I know you have uh, some thoughts on that and the placement of such uh, kinds of group lodging. Well, I also am wanting to take advantage of, of all of the lodging that is available in Hot Springs. And I, I realize that you know you don't have a you don't keep people captive within the market, but goodness sakes, that worked very, very well with Cooper when he owned the Belle de Rose, which was in town. And that worked very, very well with um, the NRPI or whatever their names were. I mean, as far as they did a great job selling lots now, as far as how their company was structured, but they brought people in here by the busloads from California and housed them in Little Rock, and they didn't have any problems selling lots. 
So I personally feel that using existing Hot Springs lodging and the existing lodging that is within our gates, I also am, think, am looking at why aren't we talking to the folks at Los Lagos? Um, I mean, they're busy in the summer months, but peak time to be bringing visitors here, in my opinion, is in, in, we could have October yes. be covered mm -hmm. up with visitors would be wonderful because the place is beautiful and golf is wonderful in that month. Pickleball. And, and pickleball. Yeah, the pickleball and, and everything, you know. And so I have a lot of things on my plate that I think are a better use of our time and money than a lodge, but that's just me. I, as Buddy said, I'm one voice, so I will voice my me, opinion accordingly. Can I just say one other thing? Let me add one other thing. We will have one of these sessions in August. Okay? A Let's Talk. A Let's Talk. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. And in by that order. time, we will have heard what the presentation is. So for us to spend another 20 minutes talking about this, right. we're, we're wasting, wasting your time. We're wasting your time. Yes. Right. So I, I recommend we table this and move on. Okay, very, very good. Um, let you, me, let me just... I have a question um, about what Buddy said. Um, you, you mentioned that Cooper had sold property outside the East Gate. I didn't say that. Oh, uh, I, I, okay. I guess I heard it wrong. I he said, said he has, if, if he sold it. No. No? I said he has sold some of his reserved property that's inside the village. Okay. okay. But you also uh, said then I said hypothetically, right. it, and I'm not saying he did. He okay. owns the 56 acres. Okay. Yeah. So. But you said we would have to provide infrastructure if outside. He sold, if he right ma'am, if he does a declaration deal to bring in the 56 acres into the village, we have okay. to do the infrastructure. Okay. Yeah, you left that part out. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for asking for clarification. Yeah. It's important yeah. that we get it right. Right. Okay, good. Um, All right, next one, Max Klein. Oh, I'm sorry, go on. No, we're going down the list. That's and fine. then for time that's available. I just want to honor um, this. Max, do you have any comments to um, the panel? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It has to do, I, I attend zillions of Can I ask that everybody can't hear. We can't she hear. She can't hear. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I attend many, many, many committees. And in those meetings, I am frequently the only one. There are committee members, and there are you. And I'm trying to find out what's really going on. what is going to happen, what is being planned, what is being talked about, and in every single committee meeting, there's an open time for the guests to speak their piece before stuff has happened. Everything that I say is not taken verbatim. Everything that I say can't be right, because I don't have all the information about everything. But I can put my two cents in, and sometimes that has an impact before an action is taken. So what, what I am saying here is get off your butts and show up to those meetings where you have a chance at being heard before actions happen and you sit and complain. Prevention is better than cure. That's all I'm saying. 
I'll applaud you. I will too. <laughs> I will to answer the question access comment. The other thing, when we do our surveys, now we are not the greatest, we, we have some things to work in, 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 in doing our surveys to maybe make them a little more effective, but we need participation in them. When they go out, we, we need you to answer them and, and to the best of your abilities, send them back. And, and I mean, like we just had the thing on the fitness center and maybe you don't use the fitness center, but you would certainly should have an opinion on whether or not that fitness center has a smoothie bar and offers um, the sale of clothing and, and, and um, um, equipment, you know. Maybe Did you, you don't, send it via email? Yep. That was on the e-blast. And I, I, didn't see it. I, didn't see it I didn't get it on the e-blast. I got it through Cheryl's website. It was not in the e-blast. E it, 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 it was in the digest or the recognition. Yeah, because I got to the, the, the problem with all of those things. I mean, communication is great, but there is so much of it. Yeah. Okay. I think most of us, by yeah, the time I didn't even the recognition see news, most people don't scroll yeah. down the six pages. If you have a survey, send it separately. Yeah. So maybe if we have a survey, yes. we should send it out. So yeah. Do yes. There's something we can take down. And okay. All right. All right. There you go. That's, that's a positive that. thing. That's, that's a positive thing. thing. All right. Survey the, separate and blast. All right. And the survey questions need to be better designed. <coughs> I can almost tell you what you're going to do from the way the survey questions Thank you. are asked. Yes. Well, I agree. And Cindy and I had talked about that yesterday. That is, yeah. They are not the most yeah. scientifically designed. Let me address comment just a minute for you. Somebody's phone being on them. The meeting times of all the committees, I think, is on the website. If not, you can call the POA and talk to Ella Scotty and she will get you a copy of all the committees, the different times they meet, all that information. Not true. Many committees do that and the information flows, the calendar is updated, I can set my own calendar. Right. But sometimes plans change. And the get, because I am often the only guest, I get left out, but no, nobody sees that, nobody cares, they don't know what's happening. But if we can get people to show up, they're really going to be I'm angry yeah. that they show up to a meeting that isn't being like yesterday. It's been changed. Like yesterday. Oh, it was yesterday. Uh, it was supposed to be a recreation fees committee meeting. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was going to be, so I decided I'm going to go see. <coughs> I was the only one there. And the people in the office had no idea. Mm. It's in the calendar. It's supposed to be here. Yeah, so that's, the, that's a positive. That's so a fair changes number. don't flow because we actually have two different systems. Yeah. They don't talk to each other. Yeah. And because I am frequently the only one, it's not worth a whole bunch of money to change to inform you. Huh? To <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what I have to do is call the day before. Is there going to be a meeting tomorrow? Yeah. And then, no, that's I, not how it should be. No. Well, I, I'm kind of a bigot on uh, calendaring. I think calendaring is so crucial. If we had a master calendar for the village, and if you could maybe filter that because you're interested in tennis and hiking and, and uh, lakes committee meetings, you could do that and make certain that you get information pushed to you all the I would love to see us have a very robust calendaring capability here. Um, just who, city areas and opinion. Idea. Who owns that? Uh, nobody. <laughs> to nobody. ask Cindy. Be, because yeah. the uh, governmental affairs, they have their piece. And Lakes has a piece. And I recreation know. has a piece. So I don't want to run from group to group. Yeah, I don't either. I, I have a solution. Yeah. I wrote down Eric because he's our IT person. And yeah, yeah. I have a free can solution. I, can no, I go to we'll just talk to we'll just talk to, to well, we'll, no, just we'll have to talk to we'll take Leslie. it through Leslie, but I mean we we are we should have staff that capable of doing capable that. of doing this. There are free calendar applications that the POA could use. Mm -hmm. Oh I know I use it for the yeah. beehive. I use yeah. Google Calendar for the beehive. So yeah. there are free free right. ones. But there's uh -huh, also software, I'm an IT person, uh -huh. software's only part of the answer. The other part of the answer is the processes for keeping things up to date. So you could have the best website in the world, 
best calendar in the world, but if you don't have the processes in place that assures that the data that's out there right. is accurate, then don't bother spending a minute putting the software in well, place. Could you, um, could you not give um, administration access to the different groups? The different committees, I mean. Give it's something we can look into. Yeah, see we'll look we can't into come up with a yeah, solution. Yeah, I heard, but what I heard Max saying is, how do we get more property owner involvement through committees right. at the proper time mm -hmm. when there's an opportunity to <coughs> influence? Does anybody have some thoughts on that? I think it's it's Ooh. sad because we have been attending as many as we can now. Granted, we're on the road a lot. Yeah, and that makes it tough, and a lot of we're all retirees, or most of us, or you've got the younger group, who is the gal, Melissa, or something that's in there <laughs> on your page, and they work. Yeah. Or I talked to the gal at the fitness center, she said, I talked to my friend, she's young, and she said, I, I asked them, what will bring you to work out here? The cost isn't any different than the one outside the village, and it's the hours. So, you know, it's the same thing. They work, they have young kids, we look at our kids, they're not eating dinner till seven o'clock. Last thing they want to do is schedule time to come to a meeting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I don't know if there is a solution other than when we were doing the no vote, we had a big turnout because people were panicked or or they were like, oh, they we better. Engaged. Yes, they were, they were engaged. Yes. So it's partial interest. But yeah. you Very know, I probably wouldn't attend anything on the fishing club. I don't. Care. Now he would, but I don't. Yeah. We definitely wouldn't attend golf meetings because we don't golf. Yeah. Larry's had his hand I, up for a little bit. I was just going to tell Max the, the fee meeting is next Friday at 3 o'clock, room 3. Yeah. I don't know how that got there, but I know that I'm <laughs> the meeting. The meeting is next Friday at 3 o'clock. All right. Mrs. Pat. <laughs> I know. Pat one. Pat one? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Pat one. <laughs> yeah, that would be. I was wondering if some of these types of forms that you're having right now didn't include a basic subject that is not contentious but somewhere in the middle so that people who are interested in that particular subject would know that <clears throat> this form for, um, meeting whatever this forum is going to happen on whatever day and the subject will include and cover well the financials or something or other we will explain the budget we will explain whatever we can explain i, I can yeah explain. yeah I, that's what the forward together right. forums are um, there was one on marketing, there was one on financials, um, there's one coming up on the 50th anniversary. Maybe you just saw that announced yet, uh, yesterday. Yeah. So that's what the Forward Together forums are, they're topic specific. These by design are meant to be ask us anything. And, and your board directors ought to make themselves available to the community to respond to what you ask and that's what this is designed to do well i realize that but i also think that i've been to many of these and so have a lot of other people here and i don't see the influx of new people even being curious about coming and i think that's Say it for you know, I, I think so. And you know what? From some I've heard, I say, why don't you come to Let's Talk? Oh, because all it is is one way, um, and the CEO is there, and there's no dialogue, and it's like you have a false notion of what the, these are. They, for some, they formed in their minds that we're not willing to dialogue on tough topics, and so it's not worth their time. We're here to prove that notion wrong. And to the degree you can get the word out. I was going to say, the property owners that are here need to spread the word that this Please. we can yeah. pick on you guys all we want. And, <laughs> and we do. And we do, which is what it's supposed to be. It, it's yeah. hard to engage people in yeah. today's society. It is. Yeah. It, it is. Just is you know? Well, you can engage them. But yeah. Do you have a comment on that? I do. The, you mentioned the forward together in response to her, but I've attended those. And they are what you just described, what some people think this right. is. Yeah. That's what those are. And right. that's fine. You know, no, it's not for all of them. You're not getting it. Yeah, it's not know. fine. If there is no dialogue, there is, here's what we do, like it, and that's it. And there are no answers to hard questions. We try. We ask questions. 
I, I know, I know. In the marketing one, there was a Q and A section. Well, we were at and the, I know in the financial no, one. There was a Q and A section. There was a Q and A section, but there were a lot of Qs and very little As. Well, then <laughs> the As were I don't know. Then I would hold I would hold staff accountable to getting your answers to the well, questions you asked. But we're that's here why this is the first one of these I've attended because I went to those first. And I was like, oh, just yeah. more of the same, I don't want to do uh, Well, so, but I thank like, you for giving us a try. Well, I yes, like the I dialogue here, but it is not at all what happens in forward to go. So it's happens. not a substitute. Just, just like no, no, no. There's no, one, there's no one answer, I don't think. There's no one answer. I think there's a right. place for topical uh, presentations in exchange, and there's a uh, good opportunity do exactly but these would be here. good for topical as well and not just hold it to, no, you you have to go to forward together because you're not going to get what you okay. want like this. Point taken. Kathy will. I, I would just like to say, and I'm not a communicator and I'm not going to attend a lot of meetings because I've got things I need to do, yes. but I feel they've done an excellent job and my com commendations to the board as well as Larry Wilson, who Canonization is in order, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> because the videos online are the best thing in the world. Yeah. 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 If somebody doesn't take the time to see the let's talk versus a forward together, then there's nothing you can do. It's their I'll say it's their frankly to help. It's their choice. Yeah. 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 It's you know, and that is a good way to keep informed to kind of learn. And if there is a topic, I think you're doing, in my opinion, about everything you can. If there is a topic they see online and want more information on, then you start delving into it more. That's right. All right, Pat, and then we'll move on to the next topic. Just one quick thing. Pat, too. It's possible that the board might have some kind of a thing in the paper, just like there's clubs corners, that might be, and, and that might be a way to communicate. We checked into that, and there's a fee for that. <laughs> of course there's stuff. There's a fee for that, so we have to. Club's corner, I get 100 words. I, oh, 100 words for You cannot get 70. not possible. 100 words. I well, can't whittle myself down. Do I, are we, my question that he, that he raises in my mind when he said that are we putting in the Let's Talk sessions in Club's corner using those 100 words to? Promote our events. Oh well, we could do that. Yeah, yeah that could be cool. That's, that's, that's a good idea. idea. Would you that's another that idea. Down? Yes. <laughs> My question would be, how much would it cost to put the notification in the paper, and what would be the result of having it in the paper? You know, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, do we think know. we would have broader? Um, I don't know. Response I think than what we get in Philly. I, I, I don't think you would change a thing. I'd like no, us to try the free approach, approach in Club's Corner first. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> not free. Yeah. I don't think it would be based on all the other spending habits in the village. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be based or that out of line to at least run up once or twice just to see what the return is on it. Uh, you know, That's you may point. spend, what can it be, $50, $100? I don't know, it would be between two and $300. I looked at it, yeah. It's $300? Yeah. Okay, if you could go ahead and put a month's uh, scheduling out there, that would be $300 for the month and see what the results are. If we go from 50 yes. people in attendance to 200 people in attendance, at least they now know when the meetings are and they show up. If it stays the same 50 people, then it was a $300 waste of money, which is a lot less than some that's been wasted. Well, yes. Let me address that just one minute. We've got a list here of the people that signed up to be here today. I understand. And, and there's already about 15 didn't show. I understand. So. It upsets the heck out of me, okay? Because it shows that they're not responsible even to show up after they commit to be here. <laughs> yeah, okay? and another comment I want to make, you mentioned a group of 200. We deliberately limited this to 40 yes. because we thought then it would lose its intimacy yes. Yes. Right. and so we'd rather do it more frequently if we are pushing the limits of 40 than to make it bigger yes or you can still right. have the limit of 40 but have 200 in attendance to learn what the 40 had to say and what the responses were. sure sure and the videos and the are, videos are little are they help they help yeah Cheryl um, I also wanted to mention that our wonderful Village Voice newspaper has a, a separate app for events, so you may want to check into that. I'm not sure how many people read actually it read it, but yeah, right. eventually it's online, right? 
that oh, you may want to check into that. It's okay. free. Good. Thanks. Thanks for that. Okay. Let, Let's my go. thought before. Oh, sorry. Wendy. Everything yeah. that they're talking about doing through the voice is done on our website. We get all these emails or emails or whatever, and <coughs> it's right there in front of you. So if you're not going to respond to these uh, these talks for coming across for free, in my opinion, I don't see us <coughs> spending any money to try yeah. to get any more people. Yeah. You can't have 100 people in the audience and only 40 people can respond. That will never work. I put down a lot about the club's corner yeah. because yeah. perhaps we could utilize the club's corner in, in putting the dates out for this, putting the dates out for, for committee meetings. You know, I don't know what we can squeeze in that space, but perhaps we can utilize that. The only comment I would make about that is club's corner is what it is, and that might trivialize Board. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, this is a real fun club. Very <laughs> 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 exclusive. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Topic. I need to move on. Yeah, we need to move on. Margaret uh, Spites. Is there Margaret Spites here? Is there uh, Pablo Weedle? Pablo Weedle? Weddle. Weddle. Bruce Caverly. I didn't see Bruce, Bruce here. here. John Murphy? Yep. Oh, yay, we have a winner. Uh, just maybe as a follow-up on communications, and this is good format, and I need to attend more than just my second one. Uh, but it would be nice if we could get some kind of control over eBlast, because I get a whole list of golf events, I get a whole list of restaurant hours, I get a whole list of what's at the Woodlands, uh, most of which I don't have an interest in. You know, like golf, and sometimes go to the Woodlands. But then to the point that was made, if there's a survey or a question, whether it's about the golf courses or the fitness center, that's meshed in with all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. So it, it would be nice if Separated. we could have a better level of opt-in on eBlast because right. it's almost too much trivia and the important stuff gets lost. I think we could follow up on that, but my understanding is through Constant Contact, which is the software they use to send these out, they are different distribution lists. So you might be signed up for golf and Facebook or and uh, food and beverage and uh, the general village digest separately, and you can opt out of one or. I one tried more. that, and I got off all of them. I, yeah. Then yeah. Oh, is that yeah. Okay? You yeah. can't opt out. You signed up. Signed up. <coughs> you cannot do that. Like crap. Okay. So check that out. Yeah, we need to we need to check that out because it shouldn't be. It all used to be. I don't say it. Yeah. Okay. You tried that. You opted out. I you tried it. Getting nothing. I actually put in a new email address to start <laughs> over, and I got everything that I just mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, I didn't sign up for it. I dang. Just, okay. I asked for like yeah, more. Yeah. I wouldn't following up on that. In fact, I'm getting two golf things, and I don't even know what yeah, club know, from a from a cane. I don't. Golf yeah. Things. Yeah, yeah, I don't know I don't anything think. about golf. Don't care to. So. All right, Kathy, do you have something on topic? Well, about the emails. Yeah. Why is there advertising for things like in Arkadelphia and different events in surrounding towns? Hey, can we have just one, one meeting, please? Yeah. Thanks. That's something oh, I noticed meeting. recently. And to me, it's just crowding an already crowded forum. Yeah, I think, like that. I think is this, that becoming a money maker? No, I, no, they're not selling ads. I think, could I please, thank you, out of respect for everybody here being able to hear, um, I think what they're, trying to do is to show uh, the property owners that receive these that there's a variety of things to do in the region that aren't necessarily POA things. And so they're picking and choosing what to do, essentially giving free advertising to whoever, whoever yeah. they, they choose. Now, you're commenting that it's getting a little bit kludgy and a little bit crowded and maybe there's a better way to do that. but. I tend to be supportive of wanting to communicate to our property owners the breadth of stuff that we have here. Maybe there's a better way to do it. Yeah, or maybe a separate. Yeah, I was going to say, let's that. do a separate <laughs> one well, on different we, things to do. I think if do. we could get, get the opt-out thing fixed, we might go to the office. We might very well. Very okay. okay, very good. It's Rocky Peebles here. No. Okay. He signs up for... I don't know that he's his been to son, his home. son is in town and he couldn't make it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, very good. John Murphy? You called him. Oh. He already called him. You just called him. You just get Oh, my, my mistake. Sorry about that. Kathy Link. 
really didn't know who you guys are. <laughs> Tom. This is Tom. Tom and Monica. Tom. Say, we yes. say the I'm last not even name. Try the, oh, I'm come on. Try the last name. Well, it's, come on. It's Pella Zeri. It's there you go. Zeri. See? For everybody else to know. Tom. Uh, we already talked about the lot, so I'll skip that. Um, is there a way that we can come up with some kind of flow chart to explain all these documents, how they get that tied in? Like we're talking about the finance committee, they've got to have a charter. I mean, I was totally confused about all these things that you have to have in order to be in the charters and within stuff. limits of the bylaws. Oh, so you're saying a visual on our governing documents so that Correct. we have some flippant sense of how these yeah. all right. Work so what is a committee together? required to have to be in compliance with bylaws? If you'll kindly write that down, we've got a governance committee meeting uh, on Tuesday. I might just draft yeah. something up to see what the committee thinks and see if we can't make that that public because it does take some study to understand. Exactly. This. And, and I, it, some of the feedback I'm getting is, why do we make it so damn complicated? Exactly. I thought if you had a finance committee, they looked at this and that they didn't have a whole set of rules because all they're doing is being observers of what's being taken, being transpiring, and then they make a comment or a suggestion to the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, why is that so damn difficult that somebody that might want to volunteer says, I ain't getting involved in that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My second issue is okay. um, on the lakes again. We're getting in the warm season and a lot of the lakes outside the village have hydrilla. And back when we had poor management of the lake and they decided to go against what the Army Corps of Engineers said, the fish and game said, you don't thrash that stuff. We spread it and locked Lake Balboa down for six, seven months. Yeah, yeah. We've got boats from outside the village that are coming in all the time. Right. We don't have anything in place for an inspection of boats, which you know we know is very costly if we end up contaminating one of these other lakes, because you don't know what's there until it's spread through a good part of the lake. Yeah, that's right. Are we doing anything? You know, that would be a lake committee thing, but I would think that maybe you guys might have heard something about that. That would be a lake committee thing. To my knowledge, there are, you're right, there's no inspections going on per se. Um, I did see uh, in the uh, Village Digest yesterday, I believe, where Brad, our lakes manager, was imploring the community that should they see something, please call right away. Um, that happened two years ago where somebody uh, saw some hydrilla in Lake Balboa the summer after um, we had the bad, bad uh, infestation. And immediately they got the chemicals here and it didn't become a problem. So they have a plan for addressing it. But to my knowledge, it doesn't include inspecting boats. We don't have any signs coming into the village saying, please inspect your boat before launching. We do. And in fact, um, the Balboa Yacht Club paid to have one sign created and posted uh, at the Balboa boat ramp. Do they have it on the other lakes? I don't know if they have it on the other lakes. It was the Balboa Yacht Club that did it. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably not. <laughs> I don't want to get too... Uh, <laughs> us um, and not them, but um, that was kind of its focus, particularly since we had the hydro problem. Okay. Yeah, but it talks about aqu aquatic hijackers, I think is how they ter yeah, termed it, and, and ask, and it's a big red sign, and it's on two by sixes, I believe. Well, certainly. Four by sixes. That. But, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have a question. Nope, I'm the other half. Oh, you are? Well, you're down the list. Well, come on. Our <laughs> names are the same. I signed up before you did. Oh, no. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. All right, thank you. Go ahead. You. This is Monica. Um, the enterprise goals, mm -hmm. when I went through, what are they? I mean, I was going through the CMP <laughs> meeting, and I'm going, OK, Keck's response, Mr. Keck responded. Pass me your paper. Does everybody know what the enterprise goals are? Keck's response. That's a hard uh, question. That goes to education. I'm going, you mean you can't answer it, but those are the goals you're supposed to be following? Uh -huh. Are they out there? Did we just, I'm just missing it? Or what are the enterprise goals? Yeah, the enterprise goals are in the budget packet. Okay, so there was a presentation to the, the draft of them was reviewed with the board last June. They were represented in a final form in September. Subsequent to that, there was two budget meetings, which to Max's point, you know, we, we uh, secured the Coronado Center and got about 12 people to come to the budget meeting, the first one. And the second budget meeting, they were all referred to then. And then when we approved the budget 
the enterprise goals were approved at the same time that happened in October. Those were all very public meetings. But you can be forgiven for not necessarily remembering them, right? So you can find them on the website as okay. well. Uh, in, uh, can't tell you exactly where right now. I was just but curious because Mr. Keck didn't website. even bring it up. So yeah. he didn't even respond. This is where they are or this is what they are. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, okay. They are on the website. Well, no, they're hard to find. I've got 28. See, I don't even like the new website. Yeah. I'll give you a copy. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. It's in the budget plan. That's what I was working out. That's my copy, but I'll get another. This is my personal board brain, and that's what I brought with me. And this is the budget packet. It looks like this. It's 53 pages long, and page, I believe, four is the enterprise goal. So it's very, that's a very common. It's very, it should be front and center. Okay. Yeah, but then, in addition, I will tell you that the CEO has what's called strategic goals <coughs> for 2019 that um, that are in addition to those. So uh, goals that she's held accountable for, three of which I think are especially important. One is uh, having a marketing strategy in place by August. One is having a revenue strategy in place by August. And the third one is having a deferred maintenance uh, definition in place by August. You know, that's booger, it, it, defining what deferred maintenance really yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I think right. it should be and, more. Can you go ahead with the pool? Is that really, are we replacing what we had, or is this a new amendment? It gets, it gets a little messy. So um, some of those are, are in place as well, and, there, and there's others. Um, but yeah, those, those should be commonly those should be easily understood and easily found. Found yeah. on the website. Yeah. And, there, and are the strategic goals uh, on the website also? No, they're not on the website. Okay, Kip, are we privy to a copy of those? Uh, I don't believe so. But I think this year we're going to make certain it's all one document that everybody can see. Yeah. I have a problem with the website. <laughs> I can't go. Forget it. I can barely hear you, Kat. I can barely hear you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I have a problem with the website. Okay. I, I can get everything I don't want. <laughs> I, I cannot get without an hour or so, and I'm certainly not educated in, in the technical world, that is very short. I can't get on your website, unless I go to the one prior, the bylaws. Oh yeah, okay. It's okay, there. I can't find without gritting my teeth uh, the same types of information. I can't figure out where the committees are. I, it's a very, it, you can go to golf, you can go to new homes, you can go to take a tour, you can, but you can't find out any information that you need in order to. Right. <laughs> it's like it's difficult for villagers to find the information they want to find. No, I've done that. I've done that. I've been on that. The budget packet from 2019. I, was looking for the bylaws. I can get the bylaws if I go to the previous website. Okay. That's fine where to sign up for this. Might be a good time for Yeah, it wasn't on the website. It wasn't on the website this time. It was on knee blast at the very bottom. Time out. Time out. Time out. So yes, signing up for this is on eblast. It's not on the website, but these are these are um, very valid comments, and I share a lot of them too. Uh, um, again, being an IT person, I, I too get a little frustrated. I'm going to take a little risk here. Um, I might get booed out of the room, so I'm really glad I'm close to the door. <laughs> Let me try this. Um, how many people? Uh, the chief member experience officer. Uh, position. Many people have commented that they think that is a, not an appropriate position at a high level in the village. Most of what we've talked about what here. What is the definition of the Yeah, we don't even what know what it is. Job. What is her it was job? It in the job description. It was in the job description. So maybe those that um, aren't. It was a pretty bang job yeah. description. Yeah. Here's, here's the point I'm, I'm wanting to make. Almost everything we've talked about here involves member experiences and ways in which we're not doing as well as we ought to be doing. This is the kind of thing I would like to see our chief member experience officer make improvements on. 
being able to, um, to opt out of emails you don't want, being able to get to a community calendar that you can rely on, encouraging people to uh, come to meetings. There's lots of ways we can improve the member experience that I think our approach being as crucial as what Jason Temple does in keeping our roads running and our, our toilets flushing, you know? I mean, if, if we don't have a good and exceptional member experience here, what do we have to, to, to sell to a waiting world? So that is her job. That's what her job that is supposed is to be. It is about the member experience. It's about all the reasons we And this isn't a here. duplicate in anyone else's position or job. No, no. So, so director. the chief operating officer mm -hmm. is responsible for making certain that all of our infrastructure and <coughs> buildings are functioning the way they ought to be functioning, that our roads are repaired, that our sewers are, are <coughs> you know, wastewater is being managed, that, you know, all of that. We know what the police do, do, and we know what the fire does. That's easy to understand. We understand what finance and IT and HR do. That's easy to understand. The member experience officer to me is so simple. It's all the reasons we moved here. And we chose this place over every other option <coughs> any of us might have considered. And that's what that person needs to excel at, is making certain that our member experience is all that it needs to be that it's going to be attractive to the outside world. I think that is crucial. I'm a supporter of the position and have very high expectations of it. Does she come to any meetings with the public sees her and question her? Uh, she hasn't started her employment until next month. She doesn't oh. She doesn't live here, so I really don't see how she could be familiar with she the just community. Bought a house here. I know who the people she okay. bought it from. Yeah, but how but is that different from a communication? I was going to say, yeah. don't, oh, is I this see. being duplicated somewhere in all the other Kathy, positions in the village? You and I had a wonderful conversation one time in Granada. We were sitting out on the back and we talked about what it's like when sometimes our visitors come to the um, clubhouses and they get sometimes get not the best attitude um, by yeah. some of the other property owners towards those visitors or maybe some of the clubhouse attendees and what well, is that experience like for a visitor here that goes well beyond communication doesn't it? That's my point I'm making. Well, they get the it same is, service villagers do at the restaurants. Right. <laughs> All right. But, so we need to be concerned like that. about that, right? Yes. We well, need to be very concerned but, about that. And that's my hope and expectation. The board doesn't interfere in personnel matters. Don't hear me say that, that I'm doing that. But this is why I support having someone at an exceedingly high level in the organization be accountable for that member experience that goes well beyond communication, well beyond. And this may be getting into my question, but we have a, I, I don't know if it's a director of communications, but we have a communications manager. We have a director of marketing who runs the real estate office. We have a director of tourism. We had a food and beverage director. Uh, we have a director and assistant director of golf, and then another person to handle outside golf tournaments. Um, it seems to me that we have an awful lot of positions at high levels that kind of duplicate things. I mean, yeah, we've got a food and beverage director that manages two restaurants, mm -hmm. and we've tried to give them a good opportunity, and it just isn't there. Uh, now we're hiring a member service mm -hmm. experience officer to oversee that and find out, you know, I can yeah. tell you what the problems are. It's inconsistent food and horrible service. That's it. You don't need a service. I mean. And I'm not saying they're not necessary, and I know you're going to tell me that goes into operations, but can I go into my question now? <laughs> yeah, four okay. years. Yeah. For about I, what prompted me to attend <laughs> this one? Yeah, here I go. What prompted me to attend this one is I saw a couple meetings ago, watching it online, uh, an outstanding ovation for our CEO for balancing the budget. But it was a mess in 2016, and now it's balanced. And kudos to her. It's like. Well, you had a $3 million carryover from 2015 that was escrowed. You had another $3 million every year since then, and you're being congratulated for balancing the budget? You know, we get a 1% increase in Social Security and think, oh, that $5 is going to really make a difference. <laughs> $3 million does. Well, and we're, we have, it seems to me, 
our budgeting process may need to be revisited and that we are top heavy in terms of the directors. We're having directors to manage directors to manage directors. Yeah, that's, that's and golf's going downhill too, but that's not budget. Totally agree. Well said. Without commenting on the hierarchy of the POA, uh, Pat Girl asked Pat Boy the same question at home, and Pat Boy's answer was, think of her as Julie, the cruise director on the love boat. <laughs> That's a pretty good description, because what is the cruise director supposed to do? Sure. Make, it Make sure happy. people have a good time. <laughs> Sure. You know, a good experience, yeah. however you want to find it. But yeah. That to me is kind yeah. of... Yeah, I thought the tourism yeah. company... You no, know, he's outside. You know, he develops government. So those, are, those, are, those are fair comments. One thing I would say, though, I, I want to get back to your applauding for balancing the budget. Everybody understands the budget is balanced every year, right? It's just that we have to sacrifice too many things to get that that budget balanced every year. Exactly. So no one's... No one's commending anybody extraordinarily for simply balancing the budget, but like last year, we had to defer some of the capital uh, expenditures in order to get that balance, that budget no. balanced. Um, but that, no one was happy about that, by the way, but that's what had to happen. Well, but and that's what How we should we prevent that from happening in the future, because I think the perception among villagers, and, and there was a little support for what I said, the perception among villagers, at least for me, I mean, was a big proponent of the two-tier. I wish we could pay a little more, because I do agree we need it. But you're never going to get another increase, because the perception among villagers is that that budget increase, that two-tier form, which caused a lot of non-residents to vacate, yeah. but that increase was to be spent for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And what we see are another officer who we have no idea what they do, and another officer who we have no idea. It's not being spent for infrastructure. What officer do you have no idea what they do? Uh, well, let me start. The director of marketing who runs the real estate Well, office. that's not an officer. I, that, my question, you said her, an officer. Her official title is director of marketing. Cheryl Dunson? Right, but she's not an officer. She's not oh, an officer. Okay. Oh, I was, just, I was asking about officers. No, okay. I'm sorry, director. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Director of marketing who runs a real estate office. Not a fa not a fan of it, but we've got a director of tourism. I understand that point at the director level. I didn't understand it at the officer yeah. level. We've yeah. Got, and in marketing, we've got a director of the I real know. estate office. We've got a director who is also director of marketing, but I hear we're hiring another one. We've got a director of tourism. We've got a director of placemaking, who I have no idea what she does. I, I like her, and I think she can be very good. But I, for one, would like to know kind of a job description for each of them. And the job descriptions I see are pretty soft. Yeah. But what yeah. we're actually getting for that? Now we've Where got a director you know? of member experience and a new director of marketing. And I still think our marketing program is incredibly <laughs> ineffective. Yes. And even has the wrong, totally the wrong focus for mm -hmm. what we want to accomplish and what would actually sell the village. It would and be nice to see somewhere what each of these positions, what what is their job? And what are we, I mean, I don't want, I don't care what your <laughs> salary is, well I do, but I know I'm never gonna get it. What, what are we getting for our money, mm -hmm. kind of thing. I mean, that's important, <coughs> it's our money. Yeah, I, perception if nothing else. Exactly. Matters. One thing we are working on at the board, we have to be, um, make it clear what the board needs to do is to articulate very clearly to the CEO what our performance expectations are for the organization yes. right I don't think we've done that very good very well uh, in at least recent years since I thank been here. you and I want to do that a whole lot better we emailed about that um, just this morning as a matter of fact right. because we have that um, we have the retreat where we had kind of some thematic things that we could go <coughs> after but we need to be pretty articulate about that. One of the items, for instance, is um, get a better return on the assets we already have. You know, so one could say golf courses, you know, or the Woodland Center or the Fitness Center. Could be any number of things. Well, what goals should this board set for that? And I set that in contrast to worrying about how staffing is happening. Because frankly, as long as staffing happens within budget and all of the expectations of the board are met and they're good expectations, we really shouldn't care about what the either. job descriptions are, right? So job look, examining job descriptions or who reports to who or at what level sometimes becomes an inappropriate surrogate for holding someone accountable for performance. So in other words, the board really can't have a say. Um, it's up to Nat and Miss Nally to hire 
who she deems appropriate and you control that by the budget and by her goals being accomplished. Couldn't have said it better myself. That's it, what we need to aspire to, to be a good board, in yes. my estimation. And Is that the I way it we, should be done? Is oh, that the way I most are operated that way? I don't know. Yeah, I, I believe it is. And I think there's lots of materials that would support that. But who sets those goals and how they will be measured? Uh, the board does. The board. They do? The board. That's, that's what we do. Why in the past, and I've seen bits and snippets of them. Why are they so soft? Diane needs to respond. So I can you see need, it. Yes, you need yeah, please hard you know specifics because the enterprise goals, if you read them, are a joke. And what happens? I kind of agree. Just landscape maintenance, it's like that. and you fail miserably. I, um, any, are there any repercussions? No, no. not so um, I'd like to jump in here right I'm, now. I'm going to and say that as a new person. I went to the retreat, and I'm sorry, I hope you're listening. I went I to the listening. retreat <laughs> viewing it as, I mean, yeah, I read the words, but I didn't look at it that I was establishing next year's goal at that retreat. That is, you know, uh, prior to my first board meeting. Um, <coughs> granted, I wasn't here for the orientation session, but I did try to watch many, many hours of that video, and I did read my book, and I did, you know, go through things. But I did not realize that we were establishing budgetary goals at that retreat session. I thought that retreat session was that we were establishing our ideas of where we saw it. The, the, the direction that the POA might should be having. We threw things out. I want to address things. Uh, Pat's statement that health care was a priority. And yes, I realized that the word, the verbiage was in there that we were setting goals. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize they were budget goals and that we were not going to have more meetings. And I sent you an email in regards to this yesterday mm -hmm. to specifically address to budget goals. Yes. And while you have included in your response some things that were talked about at the retreat, I, as an individual board member, which I'm only one of seven, I have some other hardline issues that I would like to see considered in this year's budget, yes. okay? I don't want to see what I call the 2019 budget, which is, when I'm saying this year's, now I'm talking yes. 2020. Um, I see a sandbag budget this year, frankly. Another one. <laughs> no, in 2019, that we're living yes. with this year. Yes. That, that we have, the people that were elected in <clears throat> April have no influence on the 2019 budget. Right, okay, and that cannot be revisited. You get a one-shot stop, and that's it. And it, if so, is that the proper way to conduct board proceedings? Well, yeah. we, we, you, 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 you've set, you, you, you set a budget, you set guidelines, you set a budget, and then you, then you task staff with doing that, okay? So it would be rather unfair for me to come in here, or us yes. to come in here at mid-year and say, well, guess what? That's not your goal anymore. Mm -hmm. yes. But you're you saying know. the retreat you did attend was in preparation for the 2020 budget. Well, was your apparently goal it was more in preparation for the 2020 budget than what I realized. But can but, that not be And I'm visited? hoping that it can be, that we can yes. get together and, and, and interject some further ideas yes. because I have issues from my as, background. As do villagers. As, from the expense side. And while, you know, Cindy thinks that our amenities can generate, we try to get them to generate more revenue, I deal with supply and demand, and, yes. and you, you, can only, you can only squeeze so much out of that turnip. Absolutely. And yes, we need more rooftops, and yes, we need more things like that. But we also maybe have to say, well, this is what we are, and this wow. is what we have, and this is what we have to live with. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just like I have to do in my own yes. budget. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, I'm hoping that we have an opportunity to have, you know, we have our brainstorming sessions that we've started and I'm hoping that you know that we can dwell into this and and have something that we can really stick our teeth into as we go into the budgeting process or otherwise you're right we have another year of fluff yes and and that's going to be hard for everybody to study well yes. and we've been and no offense Cindy and I've had some good discussions and I have a great deal of respect for what you do and how will you put up with this I don't know yeah. <laughs> but if we elected the new board, at least in my opinion, the new board members, because I didn't see as much change as I anticipated from the prior year's election. I supported the winners each time, but 
have been dissatisfied. And I look at the process somewhat, and you can't bring that up on the agenda. We're tabling that for another time. And I see controls there that I don't think should exist in a community our size. Yeah. We're using corporate yeah. so BS in give place. Give an example, of that and I'll, I'll be happy to address it. Give an example. OK. One was when you wanted the day you were sworn in, or the day the new board members were sworn in, and Tormi wanted to bring up some, I hope it's OK to acknowledge the board members here, but wanted to bring up some additional uh, guidelines or something of that nature, uh -huh. something. and. The meeting was over. It was just adjourned. The Roberts Rules of Order didn't allow us to do that. No, actually, okay. our bylaws didn't allow our us to do that. Our bylaws um, define what a special meeting is, and that is a special meeting. You right. cannot okay. change the agenda. So that, is true. that but, wasn't inappropriate. So we screwed up. Okay, you brought it up at the wrong time. We brought it up at the wrong but time. But it's kind of like the budget. If the retreat was where you could have some input into the 2020 budget, which we've still got several months before it's finalized. It seems to me that that could be revisited. We've got you, the board has been strangled because I watched every one of the board orientation things and I'll just about there, I'm not an attorney, but I guarantee you that case law, I, I challenge them to show me three instances where people were individually held liable for actions of a board for a community like this. I don't think they exist and I thought it was a scare program to try to neuter board members. Well, I'll, I'll just a comment to that. The only time um, a person might be concerned about being individually sued is if they are conducting outside our governances. Then they have to worry about being sued. Not if they're if they're abiding by the governances, there's no concern about individual suit. And that was made clear. But I don't think that was widely understood. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting to take a survey and all write the questions for the board <laughs> members and see how it was perceived by them. <laughs> yeah. Then, well, it would be interesting. And we do. We have a uh, we have an executive session coming up on June fourth to discuss specifically village homes and lands. Um, and in that, we are bringing the attorney in to revisit some of those topics. Good in discussion with village homes and lands. That's the topic. That's the executive session topic. Is so that makes it that qualifies it for executive session. Sure. And in that, we'll have an attorney to help us with village homes and lands. Okay. But elements that has who can then um, address any remaining concerns that any board member has about the perception of what the liability is. Okay. Yeah, Pat. I don't understand how the new board members can possibly think that they would be able to do anything within the 2019 year because everything was set. We were working on the year 2020. So when you all um, were running for office saying that we're getting rid of CMP, we're getting rid of the CEO, and the heck else knows what. Even I knew that that was impossible for the most part because we had already adopted 2019 and we were working on 2020. <coughs> so I don't understand how three people, and I'm assuming it was all three because uh, for the most part you, you uh, campaigned on, on getting rid of certain things and changing certain things and that never happens. Uh, I don't understand how you didn't realize then that 2019 was already set. Now, you can make adjustments as you go along, yes, but I don't see how you could possibly, especially the CEO never worked for you. How could you fire her? For what reason would you fire her? She's never worked for you. Um, the CMP is a long range plan. It's not a two day plan or a five day plan. Why in the world, without examining it fully as a board or whatever, can you decide that you're going to get rid of it? Uh, these things I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand why you people didn't realize you were working for 2020. Thank you. 
Well, I'm going to respond to this because it's a yeah, No, no, no. I'd rather you didn't. No, Can you just keep it to the panel, please? I'll respond and say that, you know, not everybody campaigned for exactly the same thing. I don't believe in my campaign that I ever said that this, that, that Leslie Nally needs to be fired. No. She didn't. She did not. Uh, the, the consensus was that the three of you were running and that the three of you could work together. That's, that's what came across to me. But they were running there individually, were too. There no, were you, had, you had pictures of the three of you. Well, that's yeah, not for the marketing purposes. That got elected. Only. Yeah. Well, that might be marketing purposes, but marketing purposes tells you what they are thinking and what they will do. Well, ma'am, that wasn't the three that got elected, the three people that were running a campaign together. I know. So one um, of them did. Two of us did. And, yes. and, and, and frankly, I got elected because I got the majority of non-resident property owner votes. What was that based on? That was based upon, uh, I guess, uh, my ad in the in the in the POA advocate and what I had written about myself and what I considered my qualifications to be. So I think that for me to be talking about my campaign now versus for me to be talking about what I plan and hope to do as a board member. But here's what where I came from from a financial background. If I come into something in April in a calendar basis year that we're talking spending and and revenue and expenses in a calendar basis year, and I come in in April of that year to set on a board overseeing something, and I have gone on to boards in the past where I came in in the middle of a calendar year budget, and things were way awry in terms of revenue projections, then my stance in the past would have been, hey, we probably better look at expenses a little bit here, because baby, we ain't gonna make the bottom line. <laughs> you know, and then I walk into a situation and I spoke at the March board meeting and I spoke out about not changing the policy that the bottom line on the budget could not be changed without a supermajority vote by the board. And that policy was changed to a supermajority vote by the board instead of what it always used to be, a simple majority, which is 4-3. And so, there, you know, the elections a few days later, I got elected, found out, no, really can't do anything this year. No, that's right. And I understand that now. Yeah, you, yeah. And you know, sometimes I, I, when you're campaigning for something, oh, because yeah. you haven't been in there, exactly. you don't understand. Mm -hmm. However, and I am not gonna sit here and have another sandbag budget that I'll vote yes for next year. Oh, yeah. I agree, I agree with that, absolutely. Agree with that. And that's all I can say, and I'm just one vote. <laughs> Did I hear you say the board of directors cannot respond to a problem, an emergency problem? or a problem, period, and not vote to change a budget item? Did I hear you say that? What you heard me say is that the bottom line on the budget, which the total, you got the budget packet there, you know what the total amount of, of the budget was for last year. We're somewhere in the neighborhood of $37 million, okay, for a budget. And we cannot change that bottom line <clears throat> up or down without a supermajority vote. Okay, if we were just sitting If we right have now, an emergency, then obviously, you know, I'm sure if we had an emergency, we'd get the supermajority okay. vote. But if, if we were just sitting around That's having good. a cup of coffee and uh, we, we learned that the person we hired to run our business came up with a superfluous name and hired another director, We, you're saying we could not all change the budget items to eliminate that problem? Mm -hmm. we, can't, we can't affect the changing uh, anything to do with staff mm -hmm. because we have no control over operations. But we have, but we have a budget for certain, uh, for specific items. And I came today to listen. But listen, but sitting here, I came up with a lot of questions. Some <laughs> obvious, some reminders, 
for example, the village is mostly retired people, so the percentage of residents who do not want to attend committee, committee meetings and so forth should be predictable. Some people just don't want to deal with that, and they came here for golfing and fishing and what have you, and we love that. Uh, there are other people who cannot survive without being involved every day. So you have right. those folks, and we appreciate them. But I have, I, I get a little bit wound up when I talk, when I listen to people talk about a board, a board of directors who will not take, uh, and I'm not saying we have one here, but in general conversations cannot stand listening to somebody talk about a board of directors who will not take action. And uh, in my mind, if we have a board, if we put a proposal on the table, it's going to be on the agenda next month, and the board of directors says, I have decided that the budget, and this is hard for me to talk about because I'm not a CPA, but but we, uh, we have a budget that says our income is going to be a certain amount, this is the expenses we project, and this is the bottom line. We did that a year ago. But now, one of our employees is building, increasing a, uh, well, I'll be nice, uh, is increasing the number of employees with no defined goal. It's our responsibility as a board to correct that. That's a problem, that's a mistake. Yeah, I, I would agree with you to the point where you say with no defined goal. That was my whole point earlier. I don't think we as a board set goals very well yet. I don't think we do. We need good defined goals. Yes. But then when that happens, I'm satisfied to let a well-qualified CEO staff accordingly to deliver on those goals. I want to say something else about the budget that I think maybe not everyone uh, understands this either. When, when the budget was approved last year, uh, what we approved was, as Diana said, a bottom line. So the CEO has to do one of two things, deliver to that bottom line, and right now that could be quite challenging, right, with the golf revenue uh, taking a hit that it has, um, particularly I would say that's the biggest issue, but she's got all kinds of levers to try to reduce expenses, to try to hit that bottom line, to curtail certain plans, to hit that bottom line. And you can rely on her and any good qualified CEO to pull all those levers to try to hit that budget that we approved last October. If, despite pulling all the levers that she has at her disposal to meet that bottom line, she can come back to the board and say, I'm not going to make it, and I'm going to ask for a budget revision. And then the board uh, can approve that budget revision. But when the board imposes a budget revision before she has demonstrated that she has pulled every lever to try to meet the budget she was already given, then it requires a supermajority. In other words, we're moving the goalposts on her before she tries to meet the budget that we're given. But she can come to us and ask us for a budget revision, and we better be darn sure that that the reasons that that happens, I mean, a couple of things. It could either be she didn't control things well or things were outside of her control. Whatever the reason, we need to understand that and then decide if we want to revise that budget according to her request because she just can't make it. We haven't got to that point. So I find it tremendously appropriate that if we were to move the goalposts in the middle of the year before she had been given an opportunity to try to meet the budget she was given, that should take a super majority. That should take five of us instead of four. That's my opinion. Yeah. I have a question. I, I sat in on the budget. The board was there to listen to the budget, budget presentations at the Coronado Center yeah. last year. You were one of the dozen that were there. I was one of the dozens that were there. And, and I was a little surprised 
that no board member questioned any department person on their presentation. They all just sat and said, thank you very much, and then they moved on to another item. Do you remember when in fact, <laughs> specifically, specifically, I think there's a, there are a number of things in that budget which I have to say is virtually impossible to follow <laughs> that I found really bizarre that no one even said, <clears throat> I have a question about this. No one, I mean, it was really a very polite, accommodating to the heads of the departments, and it was not specific at all, and I thought, wow, why did I sit here <laughs> for six hours to hear nothing but thank you for your presentation yeah. and I did I miss a meeting was I was that not supposed to be where the board asked specifics on the uh, yes. details of yeah. this but do you remember me asking I mean I, I felt kind of you know I, I felt like I was speaking up quite frequently on every presentation but uh, I mean, I'm not going to quibble that. But I mean, I, I was I, I, that was not my impression at okay. all. Okay, all right, fair enough. We can look back at the video because it's on video. Uh, yeah, uh, Kathy, and then I'll come to you, Cheryl. You did raise a lot of questions, and some of them were good. But the entire budget process, I think, somehow needs more input from a variety of people. I have the utmost con confidence in Diana and yeah. your skills in that regard. And I fully realized and thought it was established that nobody thought you could do that much in 2019, but into the future we could. And yeah. I certainly hope you're allowed that opportunity. Now, the biggest thing that came out to me on the budget thing is, hey, golf budget didn't meet budget last year. So we're using the same amount of revenue because we expect this year to be better. And then they blame rain. They blamed rain since 2008 when we moved <laughs> Yeah. I and have a, they, they I didn't have use the same amount of revenue. They increased the amount. Of yeah, they did. Well, I, that's what I was going to say, and I wasn't sure of my facts there. Yeah, but right. our budget is a shell game because you take uh, part-time employees that they no longer want, and you budget-wise replace them with full-time employees, not accounting for any of the benefits like retirement, insurance, and things of that nature, which add somewhere between 10 and 12 percent to your budget. No, 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 no. That was that was accounted for in the um, in the budget notes, where it said the overall compensation, including benefits, would <coughs> go up beyond. Um, I think it was three percent total. And with all the new people we've added, that has been achieved. Yeah, yeah well, so I mean, we, we're four months into the year, right? Uh, nothing has been achieved yet. That's 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 true. But that was the budget parameter that was given. The total top costs would not go up over three percent. Over here's where you can make a, a good point: three percent over the prior year's budget. I mean, let's talk about that. That needs to change. So so we did change the budget policy so that there's more board input earlier in the process. That's what the retreat was about, is having board input earlier in the process, setting the goals in June so that staff knew, so that the board spoke with one voice to the CEO and CEO in turn could turn to staff and say, these are the goals that we need for the year. It's an improvement. It's possibly not a home run. That's why when you bring on someone like Diana that has um, uh, financial expertise, it'll get better over time. <coughs> but um, well, but it's it's improved over last year, and I predict probably next year it'll be better yet than that. Well, I hope so. But it seems to me that the process itself is incredibly cumbersome in terms of board input, and we have a very strong CEO, which I both laud and think she has a lot of skills, but I do think there's some reining in that's necessary. And it seems to me that the board does not have much opportunity to do that. And when the two-tier came into effect, I said we had four to five years to right the ship somewhat, and we wasted the first three of those. So it's becoming somewhat critical that some of this infrastructure <coughs> take place. And we're not gonna monetize our amenities a whole lot more than they already have, from what I understand tolerance-wise. Yes, you can have small increases here and there, but given what the public sees, they're very upset at the direction the board is going. And I will go further and say that I think given marketing structures, finance structures, lack of attending to infrastructure, you're losing one of the biggest assets this village has. And that is the villagers saying, this is the greatest place in the world to live. Now, I'll still say it, but 
this type of wastage is destroying what the village, the best assets of the village, yes, and you're marketing something that very, very few people want, and it doesn't tend to the uniqueness of this village, because we've looked, because I'm upset enough, we tried to find somewhere else, and found out so that this place is worth fighting for. Yeah. But the yeah. way exactly. The yeah. Yeah. The way the battle is currently being fought only makes me angry. Mm -hmm. And we need to find some way to give the board a bit more control. The, the corporate structure, I understand. I think it has its advantages, but it has an incredible number of disadvantages. And it is used to give way too much power to a single person. And I think the board, somehow those guidelines need to be revised, whatever it takes. And God knows you can change the bylaws because we've got a lot more pages done. than we used to have. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the board we can't change the bylaws. We, we, we in, need to change some of those things. In my opinion, and I campaigned on this, and I will say this in regards to my campaign, this is strictly there again. I am one voice. Absolutely. But in my but opinion. But not for long if we have a say. <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> Unless we make change to Article 9, which as I understand it, Article 9 got changed, the last sentence of it, to strip the board of any say in operational issues, happened under the Twigs administration. Yes. And unless we change that and give us some more skin in the game, nothing will change. How can we change? That get it's got to it's got to go through the governance committee, and the governance committee is made up of, of board members, and the CEO, which I personally am not in favor of that either. I feel that the governance committee should be made up of village property owners, not anybody sitting on the board. I mean, we have very very strong difference of opinion because there again, that's part of my campaign. I feel the governance committee should be a watchdog for the board yes. should be That's the right. one that makes sure that we are following <laughs> policies and bylaws. And therefore, but to change the bylaws, it goes through the governance committee and the governance committee then makes a recommendation to the board as to um, what changes need to take place. Who puts the people on the governance committee? The chair, the chair of the board. The chair of the board, okay, Cindy. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's right, we're looking at this. So it came up in our retreat uh, a desire to look at the governance committee charter and so we had one meeting May 14th we had one meeting we uh, started making some adjustments on the May 28th meeting we're going to review those adjustments and bring them to the board uh, for, for uh, recommended approval yeah Gary I have a, uh, what she was saying about the board and you know directing the CEO or approving the CEO or whatever I find it disconcerting that Allie is out looking at a lodging contract, blah, 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 and yet you three don't know a thing about it. She's not looking uh, at a contract, though. She's not looking uh, at a contract. Well, it's not contract talks, but she's out looking at a developer to come in and do a lodge, and yet you guys know nothing about it. And I specifically asked about the pool and whether that decision had already been made about a week or two before uh, the meeting to approve it. And Cindy, you told me that that had never even been discussed, okay? That the pool, the decision on the pool had not been discussed. And yet, right before uh, the election of the new board members, that was ran right and through. Are we going to get the same result on a lodge that it will be ramrodded through and no input from anybody because she has had the decision and she's making this? Okay, so let me first of all make a comment. I remember what we were talking about. What I said is the board didn't meet outside of a meeting to talk about the pool is what I affirmed to you, and that is absolutely true. The board did not convene out of the public eye to talk about a decision about the pool. Okay, that I did guess. not happen. I guess I find that a little ambiguous if you uh, well, the, the concern talk from the together community, or whether you talk out. You know, that's like the there's concern, an option to tell them the truth. No, 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 no. The, the concern of the community is that somehow the board convenes 
makes its decision and just comes to a board meeting and rubber stamps whatever it is that they concluded outside of the public eye. My, and my, my affirmation to you is that doesn't happen. We don't do that. We don't deliberate on uh, voting issues outside of the public eye. We didn't last year and we didn't for the pool. That was my comment to you about we didn't come together outside of the public view, make our decision and come in and then approve it. Then I took the question out or I took the answer out of the context of the question. Po po it's possible, but I just want to clear, clarify it for okay. the record here. Um, so now to your point about the lodge, <coughs> what did I read? She's going to come with a, a way forward, a plan, a path forward that <coughs> she'll present to the board. We'll have first look at it. I can't even predict when it might come up. Do you know when the first time the pool came up? It was years and years before we finally voted on it. So I can't predict how quickly that will go. Well, wouldn't you discuss some kind of a guideline or something else before you invest a bunch of money in traveling around or looking around and, and uh, talking to developers and everything like that? I mean, uh, obviously, the only one that has any input for the developer at this point in time is now. That's right. Do you, want, that is do you want a board that 40% of us change every year, uh, being that uh, uh, conversant with the uh, developer? Well, and that's, again, even though it changes every few years, that's another reason that I was really disappointed in the vote on the pool uh, with the public outcry and everything else. It's like the public <coughs> goes and pound sand someplace, and Nally is going to get done what she wants done one way or the other, I don't know if she's got pictures of somebody doing something or whatever. <laughs> that she's the one that runs Careful of that. Huh? Careful of uh, that comment. No, uh, uh, I'm sorry. But there was seven, seven board members that made their best decision on, on the pool based on the facts that they were provided over they also, multiple years. But they also made the decision on the budget process like she said, that budget was a waste of time. It was just, we're going to throw $100,000 at this, we're going to throw $400,000 at this, and none of it was spelled out about exactly what the costs were or anything else. It was just bang. Okay, I've heard your point. I mean, I, to, to take it further, I would have to have you call out examples of that, but we'll, okay. we won't take time. We'll okay. your no, point. no problem. Okay, Cheryl, I think I see you're you gonna, next. You're going to like this. Oh. You will. <laughs> I'm changing the subject. Thank you. Um, my husband is hearing impaired, and there are a lot of people in the community that have hearing problems. We, we tend to do that as we get older. It happens. And there are also people that were born with hearing impairments. Why can we not get the videos online closed captioned? It's, Larry, a, it's, a it's a switch. It's a switch. I know how it works. Yes, yeah. Larry, why don't you, are you able that, to speak to a, that question? No, no, that's a, it's a YouTube thing. Uh, that's a control with YouTube. Uh, you know, I understand that it can be switched on and off, but it's not me. No, but it's, it's I, not Larry. I, all, I do, all I do with videos, I shoot the videos, I edit the videos, I take them to IT and POA, and after that, I'm, it's no, not, I'm not saying it's, it's not Larry. Larry. I'm not saying it's Larry's fault. I thought he might some, have some technical. No, I, I, I know there's how a way to do it, but I'm not sure. <coughs> there was a let me just interject this. There was some concern that the voice recognition software is not 100% accurate, and that there might be words that are mistranslated. Yeah. And the voice recognition yeah. software, and it was concerned that that might create uh, an issue. So that's the, that's the kind of thing. Do, do you think, Larry, that that these types of recording mics would would benefit the sound quality that you could put into the video? Well, that's that's one reason in this that we have room it here, that we but, have this mic. And what we can what we can do? Can we try this at the board meeting? <coughs> sure. What uh, I think one thing that we could do is I could do an audio only, an enhanced audio only recording. Okay. And okay. provide that. Uh, I mean, I have software that okay. I can. All right. But I mean, that, okay. that, the biggest reason on voice recognition is the liability question. Okay. All right, Cap. Um, the last two board elections from the ownership, to me, were about change. Trying to get change especially the last election, more so again. And I think 
if the if that change cannot be represented by a four to two vote and it's early on this board then i think the owners will go right back to the election next year and elect two people i guess it is that come up next year that will try to get to that four to two which is to alter the course of yeah. Uh, where the board, where the village is going. The second thing, and just to reiterate what I said before, a lodge and health care as the two items that are coming up, to me, are not highest on the priority list. I don't okay. know what's I, I, I could, Let me, can I ask you a question, Patrick? Yeah. I, I don't want to, I don't want to be putting you on the spot, but if you had a top three list or something. What is your high priority? What what can and can any of you throw out? What should be our high? What do, what do you feel well, the board should have for their high priority? We've got to restore some trust okay. between the board and the owners. It's lacking, and it has it's it's taken time. It's not on the last board. It's not each board has added to it for a number of years. I would say going back to when the fee was changed. And I think one of the things that might have made a difference in that, and I'm not saying they could have done it at the right time, at, at the time they did it, but a house, with a, a lot with a house, should have two votes, not one. I mean, you know, it should be recognized the difference in what the fee is. That would make right. it fair. Well, and I'll just, a quick answer to that, that declaration doesn't allow that. I understand. So that but what so I'm saying is, is when they legal. came to the board, they did not, there were hundreds of suggestions, by the way, and some of them were pretty corny, let me tell you. But the board took none of them. And that started the downhill, and then the lawsuit didn't help. I personally am surprised that he couldn't win it myself. But okay. he didn't but, but win that, it. That's what's happened. What, yeah. what would you set as a goal for us? <laughs> We definitely we have to try to market ourselves. There's no question about it. We lose, according to one of the uh, general managers, uh, we lose 600 people a year to death. Now, I don't know whether that figure is accurate or not. Pretty close. But we're, we're going this direction, without, so we have to grow. And we have to figure out a way to do it. So to me, marketing, you know, obviously trust is probably a, a very high on the list. The owners, it's, it, you've heard them say it here, they just don't, they don't believe the board, they're not in sync with the board. And I don't care how good somebody is, but if they create a toxic situation between them and somebody else, you're not gonna get anything done. And that's kind of where we are. We're a little bit toxic. That, that is one of the goals that uh, rose to the top in the retreat, is uh, property owner trust and support. Okay, and it's also an enterprise goal, all right? And it was for the previous board too, they identified right. it. Right. The problem is, when you get up there and you talk corporation versus community, and you talk about obedience and allegiance, that is a total turnoff. Those those words would never cross my lips. Whether I worked in a company, I don't care where. And you can file any form you want with the IRS, but we're a community. And we need to start acting like it. Board, POA, and residents. John has not said anything. Yeah, John, oh, you have, you have your hand. Did I miss it? I'm sorry. Behind the pole back here. Yeah, you're behind yeah. the pole. I, uh, I listened to all this. Quite a while, I guess. I probably had more seniority than anybody in the room, and uh, I have uh, also been working on the lodge issue for uh, the last five or six years, way before Leslie. And uh, I'd just like to go back to the marketing issue and some of the things that Kathy and others have said. You know, that all of these issues that you just talked about, <coughs> most of them go away if this place is growing and the attitude, and that because growing creates the attitude, you know, and all that. And uh, we, in my opinion, failed miserably in the marketing and uh, been talking to Leslie a few months ago, asked for a marketing organization chart, couldn't even get one. And then when you look at some of the things that have been said here today, if you look at the, you know, the new person they hired, I, I don't know what habitat has got to do with marketing. And then if you look at the job description for the marketing, under that, they have to have two years marketing experience 
and it doesn't get the job done as far as I'm concerned. Now, I don't understand why in business, when we had a job to do, and there wasn't, and it wasn't really done, you went out to the outside and hired somebody that knew and had experience. And I don't know why in the world we can't go to the, to the villages or to uh, that one in Arizona or somebody hire their marketing person that, that is successful and bring them in here and let them do the job. Because all the bit of the rest of the things, all we get are opinions. We get this marketing committee together that reports to this and reports to that, all that sort of thing. And all we get, just like we've got here, all these different opinions rather than somebody that's actually done it and is doing it now. I mean, I've spent a lot of my time in marketing, and as we pointed out, the techniques of marketing are, have, go, have grown very fast. And that, uh, when I was in it, they never heard of the internet and all this sort of stuff that was going on. So it's, it's very important to get that person in here, whoever it is, that really knows what, how to do the job. And, and we haven't done that. And, it's, and, it's, and as far as getting involved in the budget of this year, if you look at the, the spigot on marketing, is wide open. And it's monies are going out, which monies are, what, what's the return on those monies, you know, that are being spent? Who's doing what to who? You know, but who's responsible for what? And I would say that in those kind of issues, it would be appropriate for the board to be involved before the end of the year. And because if they don't, if they don't take a look at that, we go to the end of the year and guess what? We missed the budget by a million bucks. We don't have any place to take it out of like we had last year with the golf cart sales and uh, the reserves and all that sort of thing. So then if by that time, we had a whole other year gone before we begin, even begin to make any change. So my suggestion, even on the lodge, you have a lot of talk about the lodge. The lodge is a subset of marketing because if you don't have, like you said, we got all these people going out here horizontally. We got an awful lot of people going out to be taken care of by somebody else. It takes a lot of input just to stay even, let alone to grow. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the lodge, it's one of the best ways to get people in here. You can go to, if you look at the pickleball thing, it just happened. You know, you had, I don't know, how many, two or three hundred people in here. Had from, I don't know where they all stay, but I can tell you this, just from one example, the board, the, uh, board, the meeting, business meetings, that most of us have had or some responsibility with over the past, they always looking for a place to have meetings where you play half day and work half day. Well, this place is not conducive to that. Instead of going out on the website and get one person at a time when they come in here, if you have a lodge, you have a place to get 100 people or 40 people or whatever, expose them to the building. So it, it really is not a, the lodge itself is just emphasis on the wrong syllable. The, 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 the issue is marketing and how you do it. You can go to the, well, I was involved in this way before Leslie, and we've had some studies made had some people come in here and do some studies on what it takes to have a lot. And they have, you know, the one outside test we had, a lot of disability to support, it's probably 16 <coughs> lot. But if you go to all the potential people that would use it, whether it's golf tournaments, whether it's pickleball tournaments, whether it's church reading, whatever else it is, even the example I gave was go to the little old lady out at the bridge club, 80 year old lady playing bridge, they talk about a lot, she could care less, except when you say Mrs. Jones, you could have four bridge tournaments. Place for foot. With business meetings, nobody likes to go around. Most people don't want to go around the individual houses. They can't even find at night to stay. They want to get together and talk at night, or they want to get together and lie about the golf scores, whatever, whatever they want to do. But it's not the lodge. It's the, it's the part of the marketing that brings people in here. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I'm a, a buddy, respond, but we are at our time, yeah. so I'm gonna have to let this be the last the okay. last comment. Okay. I have interviewed a couple of the officers or whatever that had the responsibility of the pickleball people that came in. There was 260 that actually played. Each one of those people that played brought in an average of two other people with them right. so you multiply that one of the biggest problems he said we could have doubled this but we had no place close for the people to stay 
That's right. right. And, that's, and I appreciate you making that point. You know, folks, I would love to stay longer. I want to let you know when the next uh, one is. Does anybody remember off the top? Is it the 20, June 26, June 26, the 2 o'clock mm -hmm. at Granada Grill is the next one. No matter what you see on the website, no matter what you send Billy's Digest, that's the fact. That's the fact. Appreciate everybody coming today. This was thank you. a good, tough dialogue. But thank you.